Hey, how's it going everyone? It's uh, Andrew Nakis here. I'm in my studio. And today I'm just going to talk a little bit about kind of Simple Scanner and some features and ideas that I've had with the uh, Tango 3DR API. So let's just jump into it. If I open up uh, the Simple Scanner app, you can see that it loads up kind of the scan, it starts scanning the environment. Uh, it's using vertex colors right now. Um, kind of the idea is that it's one of, one of the next uh, feature sets that I'm going to utilize um, is the uh, pose image texturing. So this would be like a much higher quality texture. Um, but I think one of the cool things is how good this experience works. I mean, it's pretty drift free, even like if I'm pointing at this corner, which literally has like no features at all. The wide angle camera is still like pretty amazing at picking up uh, the environment. But I think there are some limitations to kind of the time of flight sensor that um, I'm going to talk about right now. And the big one, one of the big ones is the mirrors. So it actually gets kind of reflected depth. So it's actually kind of bouncing off and seeing what it sees and then uh, reflecting depth on the other side. So that's obviously not ideal. Um, and then I guess the other kind of small one is just how texturing works. So it has the ability to kind of go in and texture stuff, but like I'm pointing right now at this this second camera, which is getting kind of the top-down view. But because the camera is so black and reflective and, and very small, uh, the the Tango receives no depth information of the camera, uh, so it ends up just texturing the uh, the the texture behind it because essentially all it sees is the wall and the but the camera still sees the texture of the uh, the tripod and the cameras so you end up getting these like unsightly black lines kind of whenever you point it at something that is black and doesn't get picked up but it shines through and still gets textured by the camera and so these Two main problems are, you know, they're not huge deal breakers by all any means, but I kind of was working on solutions to fix them. And so if I just stop this scan right now, I get the kind of simple scanner options, but there's actually a new uh, feature right now called post process. And so what this is, is this is a, kind of like a, an engine that you get this cursor, it's kind of translucent so you can see kind of how it's interacting with depth. And you can do a number of things. So I can actually go in and get kind of a reference of just the color. So I just got that clean floor over there. And now I can go in and actually kind of paint over the, uh, over the floor. And so how this is working, and this is actually a lerping between the the color that's currently on the floor and the color that is already there. So like if I pump it up a little bit, it would like just be that just that color. Obviously that's not the most sightly thing. So like using a little bit of lerping is kind of ideal. It's also hooked up to the global undo system. So the idea is I can go in and kind of undo or redo my mistakes. Um, which I think is is really helpful. Um, but kind of the idea is this is definitely going to be like a useful thing if if someone wants to make like a really solid looking mesh, but they some things don't look as ideal, they can go in and like paint this up further. Um, and the idea is that this is also going to be far improved once I do get kind of the material texturing figured out with their new Tango's new API release um, last week, kind of brought the ability to capture poses of 
um, image frames and then you use that at the end to post-process a texture. No one's actually figured it out using the API. Um, shout out to Tim Swan who has gotten it for his, on his own kind of, his own reconstruction of it where he kind of redid Chisel and made it his own way, which is like super impressive. Um, and so like the idea is, uh, it's not, by any means it's not perfect, but you can kind of go in and make like a, a, a much needed improvement to the, uh, the scan. Um, if, if you wanted to. And like the idea is you can make the cursor way big and if you want and like paint in, literally paint in like the entire floor, make this color. There we go. Um, so it's more uniform. Um, so about this mirror problem, because this is I think a, an interesting problem because there's no depth to paint on. But what I'm working on is kind of the idea is a fill, fill feature. So I can go in and let's get a color of the wall just for reference and then I can go in and draw in kind of the texture. And like obviously in the future this would be ideally once the material kind of texturing stuff gets in you'd actually be able to paint in mirror mode. And so then you'd see the reflections the same way that it would be natural and it would look exactly like a mirror. Like right now it's just kind of represented uh, that it's kind of mirror-like, but it certainly solves that problem. And again, this is like hooked up to the undo redo system so I can go through and make the, make the changes or if I make a mistake I can go back. And then the last feature that I kind of built with this that it's still not really there yet, but I think it has a lot of potential is the idea that I can extrude and deform a mesh. And so right now there's a lot of glitches with it, but the idea is I can go in and kind of like bulge out a mesh. Um, and so the glitch right now is that like one triangle gets way bigger than all the other triangles and you get these like hard edges that obviously are not ideal, but I was looking and I think there's some solutions that I can implement to solve this problem. Um, but I can undo, of course, undo these, these mistakes right now. But yeah, it's gonna be way better. Um, and like deforming is kind of the same way where it, it works up into a point and it works at low, low spaces, especially if it's like an isolated section. But kind of the idea is like deforming any large area is just in, ineffective right now, but I think it should be kind of kind of there um, in the future. And I'm going to be working hard to make that happen. Then, lastly, which I think is is always like a fun feature, is I can actually go in and just paint on the wall, and so kind of graffiti the world, and I can kind of add my own creations to anything I see, and then. Kind of uh, make and make an ideal 3D scan environment that would be, um, you know, uploaded. I can ideally in the future upload it to Sketchfab or Google Drive. Um, if someone can figure out how to get around the OAuth 2 and Google Drive uh, getting eliminated next uh, in a couple months. Um, I think you know th these apps, these scanning apps, are going to be really interesting, kind of as a new addition and a new upgrade to smartphones. And can't wait for the future. Um, so I'm going to be continuing to work on this. Uh, if you have a Tango phone, you can check it out at um, Simple Scanner on the Google Play Store. I'll link in the description um, to that. And uh, yeah, catch you guys in the next video. Peace.